Disney logo alone now takes up 33 seconds of screen time, followed by a retro Disney logo that itself takes 16 seconds. In the beginning. Narration. There was only ocean. Pretty sure at no time in Earth's history was it only ocean. Science is giving this movie the finger, and I'm right there with it. Some began to seek Te Fiti's heart, voyaged across the vast ocean to take it. How was he able to find it? Was Maui just flying around until he happened upon it? And even if he did just happen upon it, did he assume, since this island vaguely looks like a woman on her side in the fetal position, that he was in the right place? And that assumption was correct? Not only does Maui have shape-shifting abilities, he has the ability to transport whatever object he's holding to the appropriate appendage of whatever animal he shifts to. If he didn't have this power, he would have to store the heart between his toes before transitioning to a hawk, so it would be in his hawk talents. Maui tried to escape, but was confronted by another who sought the heart. What can I say? It's exposition. Until every one of us is devoured by the bloodthirsty jaws of inescapable death. And that's how Grandma got fired as the daycare teacher. As long as we stay on our very safe island, we'll be fine. Moana recycles the overprotective dad character arc from Finding Nemo and thinks I won't notice. Motunui is paradise. Who would want to go anywhere else? While the king of this island debates isolationism with his mother, his diaper-wearing toddler is about to drown. Look, sea turtles are given one shot. They either make it to the water or they don't. I'm not sure that overly assisting this one baby is actually helping anyone, since he is weak and will likely be killed at sea early on. If I were making this movie, this is where a dickhead barracuda would show up and eat that f***ing idiot turtle baby who couldn't even reach the sea without help from a human toddler. Thankfully for the turtle, I did not write this movie. Here is where the movie takes a very Moses-like turn, although in this case, instead of God being behind the phenomenon, it's Ocean God, I think. Maybe. It's honestly not clear who's doing this or why, actually. As the ocean gives her a new hairstyle, I'm left to wonder how wrong everything I'm seeing would be if it were another human doing it instead of the ocean. Oh, there you are, Moana. What are you doing? You scared me. She scared you? You're the one who let her wander out into the ocean and stay there long enough to drown, you big asshole. Don't walk away. Mo Man, Disney sure does love to age up characters through song, don't they? Here's the bad influence grandma, and just like any movie before it, you can bet that she's more right than anyone in this film who is not a bad influence grandma. You are the future of our people, Moana. As much convention as this movie bucks, it's still another Disney movie about a princess who doesn't want what her destiny holds. Goddamn, how many years has Grandma Tala been dancing on this beach? She was out there for the entire growing up montage. Baby the Rock Chippendale dancer kid here is super inappropriate and suggests this island's males begin thinking about sex and procreation at age eight. Have you ever tried to crack a coconut? I don't care how rotten those things are. They are hard as shit. There's no way this woman could just pull this thing apart. Our traps in the East Lagoon, they're, they're pulling up less and less fish. I'm sure Why we could. We fish beyond the reef. No one goes beyond the reef. Despite all signs that this land is dying, Moana's father continues to refuse the ocean as an option, probably because of that whoever that died that one time during that flashback we've yet to see. But still, it's stupid. He took a canoe, Moana. Ah yes, here's the flashback I was talking about, wherein someone close to the chief died and he got deathly afraid of ever losing anyone again. Remind me again how this is different from Binding Nemo. His best friend begged to be on that boat. Your dad couldn't save him. And therefore, all the ocean is evil. Makes sense. Also, this seems to be a pretty small village. If she knows everyone on the island, surely she knows the drowned man's grieving family, and should also have heard this story many times before. See the line where the sky meets the sea, it calls me. And right here, I'm going to praise the film for a powerful song, while also shaming the film for having a current pop singer cover this awesome song in the credits. I'd be giving a sin back here were it not for the doubly sinful pop cover in the credits. So sadly, I'm left to sin this moment as normal because the movie is an idiot. Most convenient geyser timing ever. This movie full starts the heroine's sea adventure we all know is going to happen anyway. But we get several near misses before she finally gets there. Jesus, it's my wedding night all over again. You had a loose pig on a bamboo raft headed toward waves. What did you think was going to happen, lady? Because of the stupid pig, Moana's going to get trapped underwater by the screenplay, which desperately wants to give the father's never leave the island argument some kind of reasoning or weight. Or I could have just gone with inconvenient coral is convenient. I don't even know why Pua got on the boat to begin with. Pigs hate water. It's f***ing biblical. When I die, I'm going to come back as one of these. Literally. You've been told all our people's stories, but one. The one about us being boat people that either your father entirely forgot about or refused to tell you, all because he had a buddy die in the ocean one time. What's in there? The answer to the question you keep asking yourself.
Also, boats. Look, if you want to erase your people's boating history and become island dwellers afraid of the water, how f***ing hard is it to just dispose of the old boats? That's bamboo and fabric. Just light a fire. Boom. No more evidence for precocious daughters to find. Case closed. These boats have been in here for a thousand years, and even though they've been behind a waterfall this whole time, they're in perfect condition. Bang the drum. Grandma did say bang the drum, but despite the two sticks on top, this looks nothing like a drum. Grandma should have been more specific and said bang the upside down all wood horsey saddle looking thing. Also, at the risk of sounding cynical and anti-ghost music, how the f*** does playing these old-ass moisture log drums wake up the fire ghosts and give her literal visions of her ancestors? We know the way. So basically this cave was an ancestral YouTube video waiting for someone to enter the cave, bang the drums, and then all would be revealed? Do I have that right? Because that is way more ridiculous than I remember it being when I saw this movie in the theater. This movie does flirt with the mystical, given the glowy manta ray grandma on that whole island as a person ending. But still, this cave seems like the easy cave of plot driving information. I was there that day. The ocean chose you. Well, if the ocean is this smart and omnipotent, how did it ever get consumed and defeated by Tafiti then, eh? And why does it need Granny's help? Also, why doesn't the ocean just grab Moana and send her straight to Maui without a boat? I should have burned those boats a long time ago. No. Wait, what? You're the sea hatingest motherfucker on the island, and you knew about the cave ancestor boats and you let them be? Were you waiting for someone to find them? Why didn't you burn them a long time ago? Chief! It's your mother! Thankfully, the chief is stopped from burning the canoes by his mother's heart attack. Wait, what? Person who should be dead already finds the strength to exposit all over the hero with a word bath of instructions cliche. There is no way you could go that I won't be with you. Hey, am I the only one that remembers a few minutes ago when this dying grandma could barely speak? Now she's an expositional fountain. The mom, who barely qualifies for her character in this movie, decides to help send her off, even though I have no reason to believe that she has any clue why Moana is leaving. How does she know how to sail this thing? Movie doubles down on non-existent fishhook constellation. <laughs> Alan Tudyk voicing an idiot chicken is the best thing about this movie, and would also be the best thing about literally any movie, once and all. Next stop, Moat. If her only indication of where to go are the stars shaped like a hook in the sky, then how is she supposed to navigate during the day? Keep in mind, Moana has never sailed a boat in her life. Maybe don't go sailing until you actually have sailing skills? Just a thought. The storm went from on the horizon to on top of her in about three seconds. Movie tries to make you think the character the film is named after just died, but movie is pretty delusional on that point, if you ask me. Dear movie, showing us the chicken first kills all the suspense that Moana might not have lived through the- Oh, f*** it. Moana is untouchable. Got it. Thanks for the chicken jokes. Thankfully, the ocean storm deposited her in exactly the place she was hoping to find. What are the odds? Never mind. Don't tell me the odds. I don't want to know. Maui? The ocean confirms Moana's suspicion that this is Maui's island, in part because all those Maui fishhook doodles weren't enough, and in part because Moana is really f***ing stupid. I'm here to- Of course, of course! Yes, 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 yes! Maui always has time for his fans. Maui has apparently been marooned here for like a thousand years and shit, but still thinks the first person he sees in all that time is a fan seeking an autograph. Either that or he's had tons of visitors here seeking autographs and just never stole their boats to leave the island. We can't play this song, but The Rock is a way better movie musical singer than Russell Crowe. But that doesn't mean he's good. He's... At least on pitch. He's passable. And that's cynical. The Rock sings about killing an eel and burying its guts, and somehow a coconut tree grew from it. This movie is really playing fast and loose with evolution. Why is Moana enjoying this? She was legit angry a second ago, but a song turns her around? And this song? Is she even listening to the lyrics? This is the cockiest song ever. Uh, hmm? ah! Maui's conscience is his tattoo. Ah! Why would you even try this? And I'm going to love you in my belly. Sorry, movie, In My Belly is a registered trademark owned by Mike Myers via the character Fat Bastard. You wanna get sued? Now let's batten you up, drumstick. <laughs> <laughs> but also, Maui has already mentioned eating this chicken soon a couple times, so exactly how fast does he think a chicken can fatten up? Basically, the ocean in this movie is an ex machina, fate, god, love, and irony all rolled into one giant cop-out. This is my canoe, and you will journey to death. <laughs> This movie steals the gruff adult male has to put up with a child companion he wants nothing to do with thing from, well, a bunch of movies, but for now, let's go with Bad Santa. Are you afraid of it? Why is Maui scared of the heart now? Moana showed it to him a few minutes ago and he didn't seem even remotely scared of it. Okay, look, I really enjoyed this movie. I did. But this odd monkey coconut pirate side quest is f***ing crazy as balls and not in a good way. I know we're dealing with gods and demigods, but I reject the notion that it means we also have to deal with monkey-like coconut pirates. I reject that firmly. Also, do those coconut monkeys f***ing smell the heart of Tafiti? Is that how that works? Moana is suddenly eggsy from the Kingsman movie. Maui pilots this boat out of danger like it has a motor, or two. Point is, it's a sail-based boat that couldn't possibly go from zero to 30 knots like this movie suggests. 
seriously, I can't decide if Alan Tudyk was overpaid for this voice role or underpaid. He does so little, but it's all so awesome. That's three sins removed so far, and they're all Tudyk. Tudyk! Oh, look, the omnipotent Ocean Nubbin is back. Great. If anyone has my hook, it's that beady-eyed bottom feeder. And we don't have time to be wrong about that. This movie has to be over in like 45 minutes. Okay, first, I'm not a princess. <laughs> I'm the daughter of the chief. Contradicting yourself. A wayfinder. You will never be a wayfinder. This ocean nubbin thing is really driving the plot. Look, I can get down with an all-knowing ocean helping Moana succeed. Not really, but for the sake of this sin, let's just pretend it's true. But I cannot get down with the same all-knowing ocean understanding the concept of a high five. Shit. Why does Moana even understand what a high five is? You're measuring the stars, not giving the sky a high five. Still confused as hell why you even know what a high five is. Next thing, you'll be fist bumping and elbow pounding like Mark McGuire. If the current's warm, you're going the right way. It's cold. Wait, it's getting warmer. <gasps> ah! Oh look, that was just a pee in the ocean joke. Thanks Shrek for somehow rubbing off on Maui. My people didn't send me. The ocean did. The ocean. Makes sense. You've literally watched the ocean put her in the boat a few times, dick. The ocean straight up kooky dukes. Maui would be excellent at cinema sense. The ocean chose you for a reason. If you start singing, I'm gonna throw up. Said so the guy who sang a song within the first two minutes he was on screen. You know, the realm of monsters is a lot less scary when you realize it's also the realm of Ex Machina, because Maui basically ignores her down here, yet she frequently doesn't die. Buried within this bad sh insane shiny crab song is the character detail that Maui's mother tossed him in the water. Holy f that's dark. Jesus. I got something shiny for ya. The heart of Tefiti. Wait, earlier the monkey coconut pirates knew she had the heart of Tefiti simply because she took it out of its case. They smelled or sensed that sh It's magical. But here, the evil black light loving crab thinks she's holding up the heart by sight because it's not actually the heart. So my point is basically this. Is this heart mystically identifiable or not? Hey! Hey! Did you like the song? Not particularly. It would have been better if it were Brett McKenzie. Maui's saying something about being dead soon, which is hilarious, but I'd like to point out that this asshole went from the cockiest demigod ever to a humorous fatalist in about 20 minutes' time. Man's discovery of Nanya. What's Nanya? Nanya business. 2017 movie proudly displays 1950s era joke. Why does she even fucking need Maui, eh? The ocean is clearly doing all the heavy lifting here. They threw me into the sea. Like I was... nothing. Yes, the movie is repeating this super horrible backstory, but it's also super horrible. Kind of too heavy for this light of a movie. So, one sin for a movie that just had a gilded singing crab show piece trying five minutes later to hit me in the gut with literal child tossing. Somehow, I was found by the gods. Somehow. They gave me the hook. Why? Because you were an ocean orphan that was super vain? Did they have any reason for awarding you this hook other than your being abandoned? Movie decides to spend time with Maui's tattoos, basically to save money on the animation budget for a while, since nothing these tattoos show us seems to matter. After one five-minute confidence-boosting conversation, Maui is able to properly use his hook again. Even the ocean is tired of keeping track of this stupid f***ing chicken. Two hands in the water, both gauging for warm pee, if the movie has taught me anything. I mean, sure, he's bonded with Moana a tiny bit lately, but still, why did Maui agree to risk his life on this quest again? This looks dangerous as f***. I assume Teka built this barrier around the island, so why would she leave one small passageway open? Did Galen Urso help design it? Somehow Moana's mistake of misjudging distance cost Maui his hook's power. Somehow. And yet I'm confident that it won't matter and the good guys will still win because Disney. Maui only flies away here so he can Han Solo back into the climax later. Sorry, but it's the truth. Too many minutes of the movie acting like Moana is actually gonna quit. What is that? A giant ghost-looking electric blue manta ray? Why, my grandma said she'd return as a manta ray. Is it possible that... I don't dare hope that, I mean. You're a long ways past the reef. Ghost Grandma pulls a dream Clooney from gravity and I am not pleased. Ghost hugging. She stands apart from the crowd. Ghost singing. In preparation for this stunt, Tom Cruise actually swam down this distance to retrieve a mock heart of Tafiti, but was shocked to learn he'd been recast as a teenage female and lost the part to an authentic island actress. Maui apparently not only taught her wayfaring, he taught her to do it while under fire from a literal lava monster, which is to say he taught her too damn good for the time allotted. <laughs> There's no reason to be nervous about Moana dropping in the heart of the ocean, because the ocean will just give it back. So stop trying to make that a tense thing, movie. You came back! Maui pulls the Han Solo move that everyone anticipated he would pull. Why am I just now realizing that Moana is doing all this barefooted? Those lava rocks can be sharp as shit, so the bottoms of her feet must be all scarred and blistered after this adventure. Claire Deering has nothing on Moana. Movie totally rips off the odd parting of the sea thing from Prince of Egypt. Also, movie's climax basically rips off the Black Widow lullaby from Age of Ultron. I'm honestly surprised they didn't eat the pig while she was gone, since they couldn't catch any fish. Dear Bajorans, lock up.
Ever since CinemaSins began, the most requested thing has been TV Sins, and now it's a reality. <gasps> Click the link in the description below to check it out. And now, the audio outtakes.